Yes. Um, and another person asked, which is actually on my list to ask you, but let's get to it, is about testosterone. So my question was if I, I, I learned from you that testosterone is actually, correct me if I'm wrong, if I learned correctly, more prevalent than estrogen in a woman's body always. And that when we start talking about estrogen and testosterone fluctuating, and I, this is something I, I had no idea, but testosterone is, oh, there's always more of it, but it may drop lower. And I'm not so focused on how it's fluctuating, but what does that look like? Because I never hear, I very rarely hear, um, doctors talking about testosterone and what's needed, how we know we need it, what's prescribed as, as one of our viewers asked and so on. Yeah. So to stop, I mean, the, the problem is the marketing or the gender bias of hormones, yeah. right? Because so many people think, I mean, stereotypically testosterone gets labeled as the male hormone, yeah. estrogen gets labeled as the female hormone. And then we completely are incapable of thinking that people who are, you know, T testicle bearing individuals, men, I want to be careful with my gender language, sure. but your typical male has estrogen and your typical ovary bearing person, your female has testosterone. When you give testosterone the male label, you make it not important for the woman. Right. So that's the problem. When, when actually we have, we have one tenth the amount of male testosterone. So women certainly have less, but that amount is still more than the estrogen we have. That's incredible. It's incredible. It really I, didn't, I didn't know it or believe it either because I wasn't taught that in medical school. And that and the reason it, that we, the way testosterone's measured, and, and I'll I'll mess it up, but for example, it's measured in like picograms per milliliter, and estrogens measured in like deciliters. Per, like they're actually measured in different amounts, but when you convert it, you'll see that t there's more testosterone than estrogen. That's incredible. Okay, it's and crazy. so when when a woman comes in and she's suffering with various symptoms what is testosterone addressing and would she ask for a prescription of testosterone solely or is hrt sort of covering all hormones necessary it's a good question so H hrt stereotypically just hormone replacement therapy or menopause hormones uh when you say that people tend to mean estrogen and progesterone progesterone only if you have a uterus it's the only reason you need to take it some people find it helps them sleep better because it is actually kind of sedating so some people like their progesterone for that but you really only need it to protect the uterus when you take estrogen we can go into that but this, those are the stereotypical hormones that are replaced in menopause okay. what's been neglected is the role of testosterone we have testosterone receptors everywhere in our bones, in our heart, everywhere, just like we have estrogen receptors everywhere. They've done, the, we have long-term data on giving testosterone to women. Right now, the only indication really is for sex drive, low mm -hmm. libido. Um, but that's, it's murky, just like, at the, you know, we're chemistry kits. Nothing right. is black and white, right? Like there's plenty of people with fine testosterone who have low sex drive and vice versa. So it's mm -hmm. not, it, it's not perfect. But so the issue is there's no FDA approved indication for testosterone in America. So people are using it postmenopausally for low desire. And when it works, women are like, this is fantastic. Are there great, are there other benefits, like maybe a, an additional uh, help for, to prevent osteoporosis, perhaps um, just vitality, zest, energy for life, your drive, but you're not gonna get it prescribed for those things. Um, you know, what they say is we don't know the long-term harm, right? So that's why people are very cautious on it. But I think there's plenty of data now, and there's actually just a paper published in this month's Journal of Sexuality, Human Sexuality, um, on how to prescribe testosterone for low desire. So we're actually trying to teach physicians how to do that. It's off-label, there's no FDA-approved product, which means it's either compounded or you're gonna pay cash. Insurance doesn't like to pay for things that aren't FDA-approved. Right. So certainly, again, it, it's a murky thing, but for the person who's saying, give your opinion on prescribing testosterone, my gynecologist refuses to prescribe, I would say, what are you asking for for it, right? Yeah. Usually a sex drive is like the quote unquote legitimate thing you're going to get testosterone for um, and then why are they uncomfortable is it just because they don't know how are they uneducated are they interested in reading the new guidelines on that or do you need to see somebody else <laughs>